Let me start by most sincerely apologizing. We were supposed to have been here according to our request and you graciously approved by 2 p.m. Unfortunately for us this morning, we are to leave out of the Subi Airport in Wari, where we have gone to the fuel this morning because there was no fuel in the need. And we were told that we couldn't leave because of bad weather for three hours. And that disrupted our entire movement because we had to go to Auchi, go to Lumi, and felt that this is where our ground event is. Even our people are still with this. So we sincerely apologize. And I assure you, it will never repeat again. This is official. I was still, and I'm making the application now, want to come privately to see you. So I'll be able to elucidate to you, I judge. For the purpose of today, to pay our own self, and respect before we could go to talk to our people. Our journey, I can't explain what we're trying to do at this point. I can only just mention, as a, one of the most respected fathers of this nation today, I do not tell you 
me to tell you what the country is going through. You know all of us. Our country is beset with all the problems that nobody can be able to tell. But as you look at the vast problems, where am I getting? There's no nation that will go through what we're going with that will not have the same problem. Today we have the highest number of people living in any country in poverty. We have the highest rate on employment. Over 20 million youths in this country don't know where the next meal will come from. We have a similar number of school children. You can't have such. And drug prevalence alone on youths is 13.8 when the global average is about 5.4. So we have a crisis. And that crisis is what we're going through. I am the vice presidential candidate that is pleading to people to give us the opportunity to start reversing that. We can't go on the way this country is going on. It is impossible. The root of all this is the real majesty is that the country is not productive. It is a consumption country. And the consumption cannot be sustained any longer. Nigeria as a nation is not productive. Because of it, it cannot create jobs, it cannot do anything for anybody. The huge country like Nigeria could well not, in one way, do an export up to that of Israel. Israel is a tiny country of 9 million people, living on 22,000 square kilometers of the world. And we are 220 million. Even on 920, 3,000 square kilometers of land. Our total export last year is 18.9 trillion, and 650 is 29 point something billion dollars. Israel, that tiny contributed 59.8 billion dollars. So we couldn't do 50% of what they did. A dose rate is 17.8 thousand square kilometers. It just said it's almost twice Gambia. Gambia is 10.6. It just said it's more populated than Gambia. But look at the productivity. Because the country is not productive. Everybody, yesterday, has been announced everyone that has bandages access to the village in the United States. Nine, six, eight local governments in the United States is under bandages. The real money is Niger State, is the biggest state in Nigeria, 76.3 thousand square kilometers of land. They can't feed themselves, they can't feed Nigeria, they can't export anything. Yet Niger State has more fertile land than Holland. Holland without rubber is 33,000 square kilometers of land. And last year, the agricultural export, under winter and everything, is $120 billion. But neither state can feed itself with two and a half times their land. If they did only 1%, they would have earned $1.2 billion. And 650, it's $750 billion, which is almost four five times their budget. We can't continue this. This country must be productive. It must help the children of this country. We must give the youth of opportunity to any living. We cannot continue where we're going. Where people like me, all they do is to steal public money and waste everybody's time. You cannot continue. Go to Tanaga State. So many local governments in that state is under pandemic control. Tanaga State, same thing with Bruno State. Bruno State is 70.9 thousand square kilometers of land. They can't feed themselves, they can't do anything. And they live in such space that even the Sambisa for the atmosphere is 60,000 square kilometers of land, three times Israel. And we call it a forest when it's a farmland that can be productive and advanced. But we fear to go there. And it goes on and on in every other state. In Taraba State, they can grow tea, they can grow coffee, they can grow flowers. Even our neighbors, 
Kenya exported flour last year of over half a billion dollars. Ethiopia, over one billion in coffee. So I'm so many other countries, and we can go there. But we're not going anything. We're not doing anything. Small countries that were worse than us yesterday, like Vietnam. Last year, Vietnam exported total goods export over $350 billion. We couldn't do that. Vietnam live on 331,000 square kilometers of land, a third of our land, and a hundred million, half of our population. So I want to take time and come and tell you what we want to do. We just want to save this country. That's why we're going to have to stop. I've been able to speak to people in the north, people in the south, and everywhere. The next year, the nation should not be on a list. Should not be on trial. After the two years of this country, 47 years, they do not have any power. It has no to your freedom. Yet the temporary state is in the north. So there's something wrong. It should not be issue of religion. Muslims don't buy food cheaper. Where the, where the mosque was built in London was a free land by the way. He's not a Muslim. Christians don't buy food cheap either. In Dubai, the area of Dubai gives the Catholic Church the land and build this church for them. Yet they're a Muslim. So nobody should bring religion here. And we don't want people, I that don't want people to vote for us because of where we come from. I don't want anybody to vote for me because of my woman. No, but because I'm from the South East. We don't want it. It's not my turn. It is turn of Nigeria to take back my country and run it like any other country. Not turn of I don't want it to take my turn. I want everybody who is contesting this election to come and tell us where it's coming from. What is he going to do? I govern the state. My background is known to everybody. But it's not going to be something I'm telling you in But I've gone with this here for eight years. And I said that if you're talking about fighting corruption, go to the state and government and ask them whether they are looking for a penny of their money. So it will show that I've gone with this recently. You remember the day I left office, I was not going salary, pension, gratuity, no contract for ever the job. That was being owed by an Andhra state. No supply was being owed by an Andhra state. And I left in three banks, out of which your son is one of the managers of one. I left in access bank, run by my brother, I think, I did. I left there $15 million, over $10 billion, for an Andhra state. I left the diamond bank, $15 million, over $10 billion. And I left the Fidelity Bank, $15 million, over $10 billion. And the day I left off with you today, and I'm going to have me a bottle of water. Because I told them, no law. If you want to serve, you come and serve and go home. You must have another job before you come here. It is not, politics is not a job. It's a vocation that you come and serve and go home and go back to your job. And that's what I've been doing. So I'm appealing to people. We want the opportunity. My, my, my vice presidential candidate had you two universities. Personally, we're entrepreneurs. We went to the best schools in the world. So there's nobody who can tell us anything. Those who are serving the United States today, every country of the world, went to the similar schools that we went. So we can be able to say to them, if you're Prime Minister of Britain, if you sit on the and say, that I'm an alumni of Oxford, I will tell you that Peter will be also a lawyer of Oxford. Those who say that they are in Cambridge will claim the same thing. Whatever anybody wants, we are the same. So if you can go to the same school and they are performing in their country, we want to perform here. We want to build Nigeria. We have a country called Nigeria, but we don't have Nigeria. We want to give the youth future. We have talented youth, too much in each. We want to put resources in their hands. We have vast and yeah. cultivated land in the north. That's our next story. That's where we want to. We want to unlock it. We want to be able to tell Niger that it wasn't 
in his place, that will follow you in your place. But to start a building, what do the government of effort? Is a fraud who we'll go sympathize with people, show that they are governor, that they are government. A bridge fell in India. The prime minister went there. People are under fraud there. Nobody has visited them. Instead, they are even being then to feel their pain more by telling them that they were warned. Why can you say they warned them? Would they try their hands on their head? What sort of thing is that? Why are the And that country must change. For your own witness, I'm still making my appeal. I'll come for private money. Where I'll be able as a father. And I'll show you, as I conclude, in our government, we'll consult. We'll be learning that. Who come to revere people like you to seek others, to listen to you, to seek guidance? Leadership is learning. If you can't learn, you can't lead. We will do it by learning. We will make sure that, that the real fathers, respected fathers like you, are placed in a position where they will feel dignified, respected. And be able yeah, to be part of what we are doing. Because we are not going to sit in our We will come to be here and sit there with you gathering stakeholders and say, this is what the people of they don't want. We don't want to be from our brother. We don't want government to be run from our brother. We want government that will be responsible and responsible to the people. And we are going to do that. Your Honor, my dear friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, we welcome you, uh, welcome you on behalf of uh, my chiefs and members of the royal family here present. You're most welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I look forward to your private visit. Your Excellency, somebody showed me a letter. Somebody showed me a letter where land was given to you in your state and you politely returned it back to them that you don't need it that uh, you are there to serve and so on you said something like that when you were talking as well now correct i wanted you to confirm i saw the letter i was wondering is there this uh, this is this uh, social media, but this is not social media because I saw it physically. I read it physically. I saw a copy of it, uh, even though it was an ele electronic copy. So I was wondering if it was a social media gimmick or something, where something like that was given to you and you simply politely turned it down that you are there to serve and also and when you were talking a while ago you made reference to an offer that was made to you and you told them that they should uh, they should serve they should serve the state with humility and so on and so forth is that correct oh, uh, Please be upstanding. Precisely correct. Like I said before, and I had said it in one of my campaign, Norema just said, if anybody sees a piece of land allotted to me, my wife, any of my family members, directly or indirectly when I was governor, I stopped campaigning.
Your Excellency. Yes, a whole lot of temptation. A whole lot of temptation in the office of the president of any country. A lot of power. Are you saying to everybody here that you will do your best to resist such temptation? I and that we have said that we must fight corruption. Corruption kills a society because it kills entrepreneurship. Nobody thinks in a corrupt country. It kills professionalism. We can't have professors paid 400,000 naira when we have counselors who are being paid over 2 million. No, we must revive that. And we killed hard work. In a corrupt society, government officials or a richer help business people. We must build wealth and enterprise. So we we'll fight corruption. Everything is remaining. I will not take public money. And I'm sure that is, that's not what we want to do. We want to save Nigeria. And we can't save it by stealing. Um, Your Excellency, I don't want to appear to put you before a panel of uh, uh, interrogators. However, for the vice presidential uh, candidate, I understand he. I'm not sure it was fully introduced because I, I also understand that he owns base University. Is that correct? God, I own base University and meet this year. I was also licensed to have uh, Baba Ahmed University. And this university has given birth to uh, the biggest private hospital in Africa, your Royal Majesty. Your Royal Majesty, the story of the Great Benin Kingdom is a flashpoint in the arrest of development in Africa. So when the artifacts were announced to be returned, immediately I jumped and I made contact with Germany at this university is interested, Your Majesty. Because about 300 years ago, your subjects who were able to do this artifact definitely could have by now, if not arrested, they would have developed the microchip, they would have gone to space. We're here to work with Your Majesty. And one of the stories my boss had was that uh, when 360 members were offered the houses in Apple Village, I was the only one, only one out of 360 that did not buy the house because I did not agree with the principle. Thank you, Your Real Majesty. Vice presidential candidate. One more thing for you. Uh, your older brother is actually a member of Arewa. Is that also correct? Oba oh, okay. Your Royal Majesty, yes, sir. Dr. Akimba Mohammed, my spokesperson. For our consultative Thank you. Thank you very much. So you can see, you can see, Your Excellency, that uh, we try to uh, keep up with uh, with current affairs, historical affairs, current affairs, and uh, I. I will just carry on a little bit from here that 
I was informed that his, uh, his older brother in Arewa also uh, that, that the Arewa group is also very supportive of you, Your Excellency. <laughs> See, the reason why I, I mention all this is uh, to to confirm what uh, what many people have heard, what we have heard, what we know. You know, they say that we don't leave the palace, but we hear many things here. You know, we hear many things in uh, Benin. There's a uh, there's a saying, an old adage, that the Yoma hears, he has many information, gets many information from different angles of his body. So you know, you know, he we don't uh, seem to physically leave the palace, but sometimes perhaps we project our, our spirit out of here to get information here and there. Uh, there's, there, there are those that keep on arguing that the B is only popular on the social media platforms. That when the time comes, you're not going to get where the structures are not there. That is all noise, etc., etc. So I, I don't. You know, you know, I'm surprised that many, I'm surprised, I'll tell you, Your Excellency, many people, many people that seem to be, that seem to be what they call obedient, that, have, that seem to be obedient, is that what they say when they are with <laughs> obedient? <laughs> I've just, you know, just by, out of curiosity, out of curiosity, I was a small child. I was an old man, middle age. To just get a sense of what is really going on with this, this, uh, this new, this new guy in town. Do you know Peter Obi? I will ask the little child. Little child, surprisingly, they'll say, yes. I say, how do you know Peter Obi? When I say little child, I mean really little child, you know, between 12 and 14 or so there about. And old men, old men also gray-haired, 90-year-olds and all that. So I wonder if these people that are saying um, there's only social media, <laughs> if they have, Anyway, let me let me not go there. So here, the belief <laughs> zone. So the, um, as I always say to everybody here that comes to us, we pray for everybody. We pray. We 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 ensure we maintain neutrality. We ensure we tell everybody, drumming into their into their ears, that the beneath throne is non-partisan. We, are, we try our best to remain father of all. So I thank you very much for coming. God bless you. We are following your campaign very closely. Uh, good luck in your campaign. We, we, we look forward to receiving you in your private visit. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, journalists, and thank you very much.